Is that his fourth foul? It is. It is, yeah. Wake at halftime, 13 of 50. And now they're 18 of 22. And Gray has to come out. Olenek comes out. Elias Harris is back on the floor with David Stockton. So it's Stockton, Goodson, Kaida, Harris, and Sacre for Gonzaga. He just kept to nine. Steve Martin, Larry Conley, Stephanie Reddy here in Winston-Salem. ACC Sunday Night Hoops, the daytime version. First of three games that all of you will see today. LSU Virginia later on at 5.30, and then Miami Duke at 7.45. Wake now, switch to a man-to-man. -man. Probably a pretty good idea that zone really wasn't doing much for them. All locked away, and it's going to be Wake Ball. Forces a turnover that time. That's the 16th turnover for Gonzaga. For Wake Forest now, a couple of good possessions here, a couple of baskets, and they're right back in this basketball game, trailing nine men. Crowd wants to get in. They're standing, trying to encourage their home team. Here's Clark on the finish. Ask and you shall receive. 62-55, Wake with six unanswered points. Well, he got by Sacre in a hurry, didn't he? Didn't have to pull up and take a jumper. Sacre to the top, here's Stockton. Under six to play. Sacre working on Walker. Goodson buried deep in the corner. Ten on the shot clock. Harris gets it to Sacre. Another one of those nice passes, but a block by Walker. That's not surprising. Here comes the shot. Terrell, no. Rebound Stockton. That's a bad shot by Terrell. I mean, he's got his club coming back now. They've had three trips in a row where they've gotten baskets, and he throws up a prayer. Terrell averaging 13.7. Seven first half points. Here's Elias Harris. Stockton looks inside. They can't get Sacre to go. Now they'll get it behind him, and a whistle and a foul. And they're going to call Sacre for pushing Masharikov off. You know, if you're a post guy and you're seven feet tall and you weigh 260 pounds, you don't have to push off a lot of people. Not in the college ranks, anyway. You see Masharikov trying to get in position right there. I think there was just two guys battling. I'm not sure that was a foul. 4.53 to go. Gary Clark lets the ball roll because his clock won't start until he touches it. Terrell, another deep shot, made that one. Now see, he got his feet squared up, got his shoulder squared, had a good look at the basket, took a good shot, and made it. And that makes it a four-point game. Nine unanswered points for Wake Forest. Gonzaga takes a timeout with 440 left to play. Let's go back and take a look at JT Terrell, the 6'3 freshman. Once again, watch him make his move to the left side. Stop. Good jump, good follow through. Even he signifies it's a three. And everybody's pretty happy. Masherikov, nice screen to free him up for that shot. Oh, of course, Demon Deacons with probably one of their best showings against a very quality team here. This is a Gonzaga team that doesn't hide from anybody in non-conference play. They played five top 25 teams. They'll take on a sixth in Memphis later on. Gone one and four against that group. Their one win against the ranked team was against Baylor. There are two clubs that I like to point to that really play very representative schedules, the type of schedule as a player you'd like to play. This is one, Gonzaga, and the other is Michigan State. Tom Izzo goes out and will play anybody. Well, not just anybody. I mean, he's going to schedule a few that he can win, but he wants to go out and find out what his club's made of before they get into Big Ten play. And I, I really credit Mark Few for putting this program together and getting them in the position where they can invite teams to come and play them now. Wake did it last year, and Wake beat them out there. One of only five of an experience to win at the McCarthy Athletic Center out in Spokane. And right now, Wake would like to repeat the feat. Here's Gray back into the ball game. Playing with four fouls, Sacre is fouled, and it's going to be Makai. And that will be team foul number five, I believe, on Wake Forest. And they're going to say it's before the shot, so possession on the end line here for Gonzaga. And as we come down the stretch here, Larry, 
important to point out that Gonzaga's got 18 fouls. And the Deacons have only five inside Harris, and he's fouled by Gary Clark. I actually think that's a pretty good foul by Clark, even though it's his fourth. Took it away is. an easy layup right there. Samir was in any way that uh, that, that shot by Harris was going to be missed. And Elias Harris, who's had a quiet afternoon with 11 points, four out of seven, seven rebounds. 78% free throw shooter to see he's got here. You know, one of the things that Harris and I talked about this earlier in the first half, the fact that he had such a great freshman year last year, and most every team that they're playing now kind of focuses their defense on him, and he's getting a lot of looking looks at defensively that make it a little tougher for him, so he's not scoring as much as he did last year. Average about 14 last year, 13 this year, although he broke out for 22 against Oklahoma State. Here is Terrell with a three with plenty of shot clock left, and the ball goes over to Gonzaga. He's had a couple of ill-advised shots in the last couple of minutes. I mean, no, no screen. But Steve, he shouldn't feel like he has to do all the scoring. I mean, there are other people out there that they can share the ball a little bit. He's taken a couple of really bad shots in the last couple of minutes. And some action in the middle of the lane and a foul coming up on Wake Forest. And that's on Mesherikov. Wake Forest just two possessions down. Gary Clark with the easy score inside. There haven't been many easy baskets for Wake Forest this afternoon, but they're in the hunt. Comes home. Welcome back to Winston-Salem and in our first go-around of three scheduled today as part of ACC Sunday Night Hoops. Gonzaga leading here, 64-58, 3.48 left to go. Steve Martin here along with Larry Conley and Stephanie Reddy. It's been an interesting game. It was a one-point game in favor of Gonzaga at the half. They pulled ahead by 13 in the second half, and over the last three minutes or so, Wake Forest has outscored them 9-2. They're still six points back. Well, and a couple of things they've got to do. I mean, they need to continue that offensive onslaught that they brought in the last three minutes. They're going to find some way to shut down Gonzaga defensively down inside. Sacre does not get the free throw, and we've got a foul on the rebound. That player just came into the ball game again. Many are up. Not exactly the way you want to distinguish yourself as you come off of the bench. Hey, coach, I'm ready. <laughs> Especially if your team's over the limit. They are at their ninth team foul. And this is one way that Wake Forest can make up some distance with time starting to diminish for Jeff Bezdelic's crew. Yeah, the Demon Deacons rank number one in the Atlantic Coast Conference in free throw shooting. And this is where they can make it up and make it up in a hurry. 75.9%. Here's Ty Walker. Off for one and one. And this is the one guy that probably doesn't shoot the free throws as well as the rest of the team members do. He's had a strong second half, though, Larry, with seven points. A couple of nice maneuvers, uh, that, that jump hook that he's got. He had a couple of those drop in, and that one maneuver he made cutting across the lane right there. Not many guards could have made that. Rebound lost out of bounds. Last touch by Sacre. And it's going to be Wake Ball with 3.46 to go. ACC officiating crew at Hightower, Rick Hartzell, and Steve Oglesby. Harris inbounds. Terrell with the jumper. No. May have rushed that one a little bit. Had a good look. A Rob back at the top of Stephen Gray, who's been outstanding this afternoon for Gonzaga. Gray looks inside. Look at that pass to Sacre. Like it's second nature. And once again, it's Gray delivering the pass. It's his fifth assist. Right on his average. 66-59. Here comes the jumper out front. No. All air by Stewart. And the rebound saved into the hands of Arup. By Travis McKay, who has gone silent here in the second half. 15 first point. First half points and only one here in the second. Steve, it'll get back, I think, to the maturity of this basketball team. And what I mean by that is the last couple of trips, 
they have taken ill-advised shots, and a veteran club would not have done that. You know, they would line up and, and run their stuff until they got a good look at the basket. They've taken and rushed a couple of shots that they didn't need to take. Score and time. Mm -hmm. They'll learn that. Overtime. Terrell picks up the foul here. And he'll come to the sideline now. And Gary Clark comes back in. Clark playing with four. Gray. That is the eighth team foul on Wake Forest now. So both teams are in the one and one. 251 left to play. Gray with a very quiet, stellar afternoon. 7 1 Gonzaga run now. Gets them back up by nine. A little breathing room with 248 to go. Every possession magnified here for Wake Forest. Stewart stuck on the sideline. There's Harris. Ball needs to change sides of the court. Defense doesn't have to work here. This is Walker erased by Sacre, and that was a big possession. I think Sacre gave Walker a bit of his own medicine right there. <laughs> now Sacre is uh, one of the leading shot blockers in Gonzaga history. This is 98. Harris inside. Sacre with perfect position, sealed his man, heads to the hoop, and gets fouled. Well, that run now is at 9-1 to one with the potential for it to be 10-1. to one. Just when Wake Forest was making a serious, well, making a serious uh, attempt to get back in this game, Zaga would not allow them to do it. Fouls on Walker. Sacre going to the line for the three-point play, and he's successful. And now, Gonzaga has opened up a 12-point lead. A 10-1 run for the Zags search of their six straight win. Well, Clark did not get by Gray. Do you see all the moves he tried to put on him and Gray would not shake. And Sacre blocks Clark's entry there. It's two blocks in as many possessions for Robert Sacre. Good looking big man from Gonzaga. It's like the Bulldogs going to come on the road and pick up a big win. It's been about 35 or 40 hours away from the state of Washington. They're going to take, it, take a W back home. Yep. Get on the plane after this is over. Fly right back to Spokane. They don't play again until next Saturday when they open their WCC action. As they'll take on Portland. Wake Forest has another non-conference tilt this week on Wednesday night. Here in Winston-Salem, and they'll be taking on High Point. And then next weekend... ACC conference play, which should be rather interesting this year. NC State, first opponent for Wake. We've got a whistle and a foul here on Dimitri Goodson. You know, I think everybody across the country who follows college basketball and, and those within the Atlantic Coast Conference and the most learned fans, I think, in, in basketball probably reside within the ACC. They all understand how good Duke is, and I think everybody in this ACC part of the country looking for those teams are going to be right there challenging them. I'm not sure anybody has found any of those teams yet. I don't think we're going to find them. I think we are. And, and I think you, you look at the guys in, in Tar Heel Blue and Chapel Hill, I think they're going to get it together. I think NC State is a team to do it. The team that Duke will face tonight. Miami is a good three-point shooting team. Uh, Florida State, an excellent defensive team. You'll see them tomorrow night. I will. Uh, it's a basketball team that really plays great defense, trying to find some offense. You got a whistle. An offensive foul is called on Goodson for setting the screen. And that's his fifth foul. So he's fouled out. But with 59 seconds left to go, Gonzaga is in control of this one. Steve, we talked a great deal about Gonzaga today. Uh, this club that Wake Forest is playing. This is a basketball team. I mean, Mark Few in his 12th year has really put together quite a program, and he's done it with a lot of recruits from all over the world, not just from within the United States. And uh, I, I think they're going to challenge again. Looks like they're going to pick up their sixth win in a row. They're going to come right back to challenge for the WCC title. Nice three-pointer there by Clark. Jeff Bezdelic will call a timeout as his team now is within three possessions with 45 seconds left to go. 71-63 now. Coming up on some of our outlets, you will be able to see men's ACC basketball between St. Francis of Pennsylvania 
and the North Carolina Tar Heels. Uh, others, however, will be seeing Stanford's first game since they upset 